Killarney's calling me To rug at George and Bay Those pink granite cliffs Take my breath away Portaging on endless lakes Welcome to Killarney Provincial Park and welcome to the view from the top of the crack. We're Cheryl and Ben Coles. We've been camping together for over 35 years. A few years ago, we started doing video reviews of Ontario Provincial Parks to help people when researching places to visit. We are now in season five of our park review. We hope this helps you in deciding where to have your next camping adventure. Now let's go camping with the Coles. The lakes, the trails, the views, this park is stunning. You got to get here. Put it on your to-do list today. Killarney Provincial Park is classified as a wilderness park in the near north region. It is a 645 square kilometer wilderness landscape showcasing the pink granite of the northern Georgian Bay Coast, the La Cloche Mountains, white quartzite ridges, and over 50 sapphire lakes. When you turn off Highway 69, the road into, Killar into Killarney is approximately 60 kilometers. Um, you can't stop anywhere on the road, but approximately halfway there is a picnic area you can pull into, and it's big enough to pull your trailer into. It's a little ring road in here with picnic tables, and there's water down there with boats, and they have um, some pit toilets here. So it is a nice little yeah. break. And while I have you here, I just wanted to uh, <laughs> prepare you for something. Um, as many of you know, we got Jax uh, in April of this year. He's 11 months old. He's a miniature golden doodle. We've never owned a golden doodle before, and uh, it's it's a lot of uh, a lot of work to keep the coat um, proper. A lot of grooming done, and with all the camping we've done, and then he spent a couple weeks in a kennel when we went yeah. to PEI. Yep. Um, he got a lot of matting and stuff. So when we had his hair cut, they kind of had to really cut down Start close. from the beginning. Yeah. So he looks like a greyhound now. So this is Jax, believe it or not. Jax, say hello. The new and improved Jax. Jax, don't Jax. be licking yourself. Jax. Come here. Jax, say hello. There's our boy, if you can there believe it. <laughs> okay, so we apologize for that and we hope to get him looking good again, and we promise that we're gonna to try to keep up on his grooming so that he can, again, look like a golden doodle. One and a half kilometers before the entrance to the George Lake Campground is the dump and fill station. It's off to the right. You go in, there's two dump spots and one fill spot, but you can go either way for the fill spot depending on which side your uh, fill spout is on. They're uh, not threaded at all. Uh, all of the hose ends have one of those uh, ends on that has the uh, air thing through it, so that I forget what it's called, so you can't attach anything to the uh, end of it to uh, put a threading on it. So we don't have filtered water. The pressure seems to be really low, so this could take a little bit of time. So we got something for the dash. Dash, whatever. Got a map. Okay. I just we are site. One twenty-eight. One twenty-eight. 
Okay, so you just read something on the sheet there. What yes, does it say on the back? All campers must book permits, parking permits for hiking. So I just ran back in and we just got to print it off. Uh, permit to put in our win window. Doesn't cost anything. So we're all scheduled to go tomorrow. Tomorrow. This is for tomorrow, yeah. Friday, Perfect. Friday, September the 15th, which is tomorrow. Excellent. Okay, we're all set for the hike. But you got to make sure you remember to do that so you can go hiking. Yeah, I mean, we just did it on when we checked in. Yeah. Okay. This is us, Site 128 at Killarney Provincial Park. It is a very tight little site. Very um, tiny. Yeah, it says, uh, was it rated for over 32 feet? Up to 32 feet, yeah. Up to 32 feet. I believe. Um, our truck and trailer combination uh, together is a total of 51 feet, and I would say the driveway for the pull through driveway for this site is probably 52 feet. Yeah because we have the trailer right at the edge of the road and we got the truck at the edge of the road on the other side. So it is tight. Opening our door, we walk right into the tree pretty much. Yeah. Um, the awning, we can't open up at all. Mm -hmm. The uh, slide out, we did manage to get out. It it's is kind of- up against the tree. Pressed up against the tree and we got some branches right up against the windows, mm -hmm. but we made it in here. And of all the sites, of all the campgrounds to have two picnic tables, we got two picnic tables There's at no this site. There's no room for two picnic tables. There's not room for one picnic table. I know. It's a postage stamp of a site. Yeah. But you know what? We don't plan on spending a lot of time at this site. Mm -hmm. This is going to be an amazing park. We're going to be checking out everything it has to offer. George Lake Campground has 135 non-electric sites, six yurts, and two cabins. There are no electric campsites. Sites 35 and 36 are barrier-free. Sites 82 to 113 are radio free. There is a centrally located barrier free comfort station with flush toilets, showers, and laundry facilities. There's a day use area with picnic shelters, canoe and kayak racks, a nature center, and an amphitheater. There are two sand beaches. The main beach is in the day use area, and the second beach is near the radio free area. There is one dog beach, and it is to the left of the main beach. There is a park store operated by Friends of Killarney, and it's in the office by the campground entrance. You can buy maps, trail guides, educational books, and souvenirs. There are five day-use hiking trails, plus many other backcountry hiking opportunities. The Chickenishing Trail is a three-kilometer loop rated as moderate. The Granite Ridge Trail is a two-kilometer loop rated as moderate. The Cranberry Bog Trail is a four-kilometer loop rated as moderate. The Crack is a seven-kilometer linear trail rated as difficult. The La Croche Silhouette Trail is a 76 kilometer loop rated as strenuous. Let's check out the park.
There are two year-round cabins that have a cozy gas fireplace. They accommodate five people. They have a table and chairs inside, counter space with a mini fridge, microwave, kettle and coffee maker. Um, outside, you will find a picnic table, fireplace and gas barbecue. These cabins are accessible. There are six years that are available year round. They are walk-in. You can uh, use wagons, which are in the parking lot where you park your cars to bring up all your gear in. They have electric lighting. They accommodate up to six people. They have table chairs, dresser. They have bunk beds with double the bottom, singles on the top. Outside they have picnic table and fire pit, gas barbecue. Yurts three, four, five, and six have a shelter for eating outside. Four of the yurts are brand new this year. There's one comfort station with flush toilets, six showers, and laundry facilities. Two dollars a load, two loonies. Dollar twenty-five each if they're full, but I would still bring my own. two beaches. This is Main Beach or the Day Use Beach and it's near Campground B. And then there's Second Beach which is near Campground D. It is the middle of September right now on a weekday. That's why this beach isn't full. And then there's the On Leash Dog Beach which is right next to Main Beach. We're here at the crack. We're about to hike it. To get to the crack you just take the same road back towards Highway 69 that you took to get to the park. It's only seven kilometers away. Uh, there is a parking lot there and the head of trails is here. Uh, there's no washroom facilities here. Uh, there are there is a garbage in the in the trail. Yeah, um, this is a seven kilometer linear trail, so you go there and back. When you get to the uh, peak at the end of the crack, that's where you stop. You can enjoy the views, but make sure you come back. This is part of the La Cloche uh, Silhouette Trail, and if you continue past the crack, keep going. It's a 78 kilometer trail, so you probably don't mean to be doing that. So follow the red markers, yeah. not, not the blue ones. Follow the red. <clears throat> and we're going to do this hike now. We, uh, we load it up. We've got lots of water. We've got snacks. We've got lunch. i got a windbreaker jacket. we got good footwear. No flip-flops or sandals. No, no props. Hiking shoes, hiking boots. Nope. Good supportive footwear is needed for the rock climbing. And this trail is rated as difficult, and that's because there's some big boulders that you have to climb. So uh, you need to be in okay shape to do this trail. I think Jax is ready to attempt it, right yeah. buddy? And it should be about three or four hours. Time check, Cheryl. It is 10.56. We'll see how long it so takes to get there. Make sure you don't start this at like seven in the evening. You want to start this early in the day and make sure you get enough time. Daylight. Let's do it. Let's do it. You tell me you're scared So good. Time for Jax. You say you're afraid. Here we go. Starting the crack. I think you 
your brain And if it all falls If it all breaks I'll still be here I guess the view's okay if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> And this right down here is the infamous crack. I'll follow you through the black and the blue. Whatever the mountain will climb to the next. Honey, I'm with you through life and to death. Honey, I'm with you through life and to death. Well, we made it to the top. We've we enjoyed sure our did. lunch. Yes. And there's only one thing left to do. And what's that, Cheryl? Go back down. Go back down. Are you ready for it? No, but I don't really have a choice, do I? I guess not. It's really nice up here. It's not a lot cooler. There's a nice breeze and a great view. It took us about an hour and a half to get here. Uh, I don't know how long we've been here. Yeah, we've been here probably about an hour. Enjoying it's, it too much. It's with just others. beautiful up here. Yes. A lot of people uh, spend some time up here, grab a snack, yeah. grab a lunch, and just uh, sit and enjoy the beauty. And that's what we did. That's a lot of beauty. But now it's time to head back down. And uh, I'm so Sad glad we did the crack. Yes. Let's hope we get down safe and sound. I think it's going to be tricky on the rock going down. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. Well, let's do it. Okay. Well, hopefully, we'll talk to you on the on the other side. Okay, we just finished hiking the crack. Time check, 3.13. So just a smidge over four hours. Yeah. Um, we certainly weren't blazing a, a smoking hot trail there. On the way up, we took a few breaks. We ended up chatting with uh, some people. Yeah, and we hung out up top for about an hour. Yeah, I did an hour for lunch up there. And then we came back and let Jax have a bit of a swim in the pond to cool yeah. down. It is a very difficult trail. It is a rugged trail. All the rock. If you're into rock climbing, there you go. If we turn Cheryl around and had a look, she's got dirty pants from sliding down yeah, a whole bunch I was of rocks. Making a slide show out of it all. Yeah. I'm not good with heights, so I was extra cautious. But, but was it worth it? Oh yeah, it's amazing, amazing view. Yeah. That is uh, in the top three, I would say, for the views we've had on hikes. Yeah. Um, Along with Lake Superior, Sleeping Giant. Yeah. Um, it's right up there. There's some amazing views yes, up there. Definitely. And again, no washrooms here. Bring your toilet paper in a Ziploc bag. Yeah. Please carry it out with you. <laughs> um, We've seen toilet paper along the route. That's gross. Closed shoes, like hiking shoes, a good sturdy footwear because your feet are going to get in between those rocks and get scraped up if you don't. Mm -hmm. You'll lose your sandals or flip flops or crocs or whatever. Leave them behind. Right. And bring plenty of water. You're going to need it. At least two liters of water per person. Yeah. And minimum. Some, and some snacks or yeah. lunch, whatever you want to eat at the top. So you'll be hanging out for a while. Okay. Let's move on to the next yes. thing. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. This is campfire cooking. This is a really complicated recipe. We're each having a freeze dried meal. So Cheryl is having the chicken pesto pasta and you put two thirds of a cup of water in there. That is two thirds of a cup of water. And what do you do now? Stir. Let's put it in. Stir. Go ahead and stir. Seal it. And mine takes one and a half cups. Mine takes a whole lot more. I'm having the uh, Mountain House yellow curry with chicken and rice. 629. That's one cup. 
and a half. Okay, so let's stir that up. Mmm, ooh, it smells good. Chicken chunks. Ooh, Jax, it does smell good, doesn't it, buddy? Okay, it is all stirred up. And I'm gonna close it up. What does it say? Stir carefully, close zipper, wait five minutes, stir again and reseal. Let's stand an additional four minutes. Stir and enjoy right out of the pouch. Five minutes. 1820, so at 1825. Now this is some real gourmet cooking here. Well, it's been 10 minutes for me. It's been nine minutes for me. I stir it after five minutes. By the way, uh, these types of meals, you can get them at most camping supply stores and surplus stores. We got these ones at Forest City Surplus in London. We they have did. good prices there. That's, that's why we got them there. Chicken pesto pasta. Can you smell? It smells good. Okay. Ooh, oh boy. Oh, that doesn't look good That's for supposed me. to be one serving? That's huge. Wow, that's a massive meal. Well, I can't eat all this. This is supposed to be two servings. But... Yeah, yours is supposed to be two servings, and mine's one oh, serving. I have bread to eat. Okay. Wow. Bread, bread, bread. Let's get some bread. I'm going to eat some bread to sop up this stuff. Yeah. Jax, you can't eat this. No, this is for dad. Thank you. We got these about a year and a half ago, but I'm pretty sure they're still good. Mine has a best before date of February, 2051. So it's got a few years. I think we're doing okay. We can't find the Let best before date on Cheryl's. On the top of the yeah, it might be in the uh, top part that's ripped off. But when they're freeze dried, they last for decades and stay good. Mine isn't as long. Oh, when is your best before date? February of 2026. 2026? Yeah, that's coming up soon. Yeah. It's we 2023. Gotta, we got to make sure we eat those ones uh, soon. <laughs> yeah. We can let these uh, Mountain House ones go a little longer since yeah. they're going to 2051. We'll save we'll them. We'll be in our 80s then. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Mmm. Get the fire plug squished up really nice and loose like that, so it's good for lighting. Boy, did that ever light fast and easy. It's Cheryl's Lou Review, Lou Review. Let's all talk about Lou's. Don't ask Ben, don't ask Jax, ask Cheryl. Cheryl's Lou Review. There are a variety of outhouses in the park. There are pit toilets, marine style, RV style, and there we found fl a flush toilet or two. Um, for the most part, they have a mirror, water, running water, a hook, garbage. The lighting is lacking. Um, they seem more old fashioned. They're kind of dark and dingy and you can tell they're kind of aging. Um, I was on the border of skunk or flower with these ones. Kept in fairly good condition, but just still the, the smell in the pit toilets is pretty bad. Um, I think I'm going to give them a wilted flower. In behind site number 77, there's a little path next to 77. It takes you to Sunset Rock. Now it's uh, middle of September right now. Uh, the sunset, uh, you can't quite see it from here. But uh, in, the, in the summertime, you can actually see the sunset from here. But uh, whether you see a sunset or not, it is a beautiful view. And there's a couple of picnic tables here. It's nice to have a lunch and just look out over George Lake. Many of the lakes in Killarney Provincial Park are fish sanctuaries. George Lake is one of the lakes where fishing is not permitted. All the streets in this park have a name. And if you go to the end of Woodchuck, 
you'll see that there's a little path that takes you to George Lake, and that's where the jumping rock is. Right up there, that's the jumping rock. Nobody here jumping, but it's good deep water below. And in the summertime, this is get packed with people jumping off these rocks. Hello, he's calling me. Rugged Georgian Bay. Those pink granite cliffs. Take my breath away. Portaging all those lakes. This is George Lake, backcountry campsite number one. It uh, is tucked in to uh, the edge of a cliff, basically. It has enough room for, uh, looks like, two shelters, two tents, has a fire pit, and that's about it. Uh, the treasure chest, or outhouse, whatever you want to call it, is way up at the top of the cliff, and uh, that's where Cheryl is right now. Okay, I found the treasure box. You gotta go up a really steep hill. And I tell you, you must really have to go if you're gonna use this treasure box. Oh, damn. <laughs> Cheryl's trying to get to the treasure box. It's right up there. And then you have to come back down. Wow. You can either walk down or fall down. Wow, it's looking like I'm falling. So if you were doing a Lou review on that, how would you review that Lou? Well, the Lou was okay, but the getting there and coming back was a total skunk. Total, oh. like worse than a skunk. But the uh, site, it has its own little pebbled beach and it has a really nice view of George Lake from here. So uh, it's not too bad. We used to do this type of camping all the time. Then we got old and soft, and now we need our great big RV with us to be comfortable. Take a hike on Silver Peak Even while I seems to talk to me Killarney's calling me Group of seven were out in mesmerized Declared apart, protected for all time The learning's bogs and the wetlands too This is George Lake backcountry site number two and it seems to be a lot more sheltered than number one. I think I'd prefer this one. You've got trees over where your tent is, uh, shielding the fire. Um, this looks like a pretty good site. There's a few spots uh, that you can put some tents. You can probably put three or four tents on this spot. So this one's looking pretty good, and still you get a beautiful view of George Lake. We are paddling George Lake. Now both of the backcountry sites we just checked out are an easy paddle from the campground. They are. Probably about 20 minutes or so, is that what you'd say? Yeah. Something like that. So uh, they're nice and easy to check out. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, if there's somebody at them, don't check them out. Do not. So uh, we just went because we saw that they were empty mm -hmm. and checked them out. But I'm sure they uh, are probably going to be filled up later on in the day because it is uh, still summertime. It's mid-September and uh, the weather's nice this weekend. It's a popular area. Yeah, this is a really nice paddle. These views, the granite Stunning. cliffs. Stunning. This is just beautiful. Love this paddling. Mm -hmm. Jack Pine Hills with stunning views. Think I'll climb La La Silhouette Trail. Hike the crack from Carlisle Lake. Canoe the backcountry, not a soul around. Killarney's calling me. Like 
Atlas Mountains and crystal clear lakes. Winter time on snowshoes, skis, or skates. Wetlands, forests, and the vast wilderness. Wow. That's a beauty. Place your carving granite cliffs. Frame the coastline of Georgian Bay. Paddle George Lake, Rome Cranberry Bog Trail. Killarney's calling me. For cell service in the park, surprisingly, it's not too bad. I didn't think we'd be getting any cell service since we're in the middle of nowhere, but uh, we're usually getting LTE Plus. Uh, one or two bars. Uh, every now and then we don't get service and you'll see the spinning wheel, but for the most part you get pretty decent service. I think if you uh, had to rely on it to be full-time 100% service, you're not going to get that here, but for the most part you're getting pretty good service. And that's for Bell, Kudo, Telus, and Virgin Mobile. About 10 kilometers past the park, if you just continue down the Killarney Road right to the very end, you're in the town of Killarney. It's a cute little town, you can visit the Big Dipper, you can go to Herbert's for some fish and chips, and that's what we're doing right now. There's also a couple lighthouses we can check out. This is the Big Dipper, a 22,000 pound paddle, and you can see it at the Killarney Mountain Lodge. get to the lighthouse, you go down Ontario Street in Killarney and that turns into Lighthouse Road. It's a uh, very rough road, it is not maintained and it gives you uh, a warning to that and it's basically one lane. But you get to the end of that road and then you can hike up to the uh, lighthouse. The uh, parking is very limited, like three vehicles, so uh, you got to be careful of that. But uh, gave us an opportunity to let Jacks go run free, there's nobody around, and he can go for a little swim. So have fun, Jax. Some of you might be wondering on this trip how we powered up the trailer. Uh, last time we showed anything to do with battery capacity when we were camping without electricity was at Samuel de Champlain Provincial Park. At that time, I had two 85 amp hour lead acid batteries, and each day I would uh, put some extra charge in those with my 1200 watt Opus uh, solar generator. And after the three nights there, uh, the battery was at 53%, or the two batteries combined were at 53%. And as we know, with lead acid batteries, it shouldn't go below 50%. So really, the batteries, the usable amp hours, was pretty much depleted after the three nights. And that is with a few days of adding extra power to it. Well, on this trip, I have two AO lithium 12 volt 100 amp hour uh, lithium iron phosphate batteries. They're hooked up in parallel, so they're working together, still 12 volts, but now 200 amp hours. I did an entire video on how I swapped out the lead acid to the lithium iron phosphate batteries, including uh, installing this uh, 
handy dandy little metal box here and uh, you can check that out in the link at the end of the video and in the description and we show it on this trip how these batteries stood the test of time how they worked for us and uh, I'll tell you they did really well we did three nights well we we're here for four nights but we did three nights of testing and after the three nights the battery capacity was at about 54 percent and with lithium iron phosphate batteries you can go down to zero percent as opposed to lead acid which you should only go down to 50 percent so we could easily do five or six days uh, of camping with these batteries without putting any extra charge in so i didn't add any extra charge we were just operating strictly on the batteries and that concludes our trip here and we're ready to pack up and go. And next, Cole's Notes. Well, time again for Cole's Notes and we are at Killarney Provincial Park. It's been a long time coming to get here. People have been telling us for years and years, mm -hmm. you gotta get to Killarney. So we finally did and it did not disappoint. No, Killarney is beautiful territory. I meant to look up, is it the topography, the layout of the land, the rocky yeah. features, the escarpment? Yeah. The McClosh mountain range. Yes, yeah. yes, in the background. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. So whether you're hiking, biking at the beach, you're going to get a beautiful trail. Yeah. Or a beautiful view. You're going to get a beautiful trail too. Beautiful but trail, beautiful yeah. view. The hiking here is, is amazing. Yeah. What I really like about hiking, and I've said it many times, is I like a good payoff. And here they're fairly short hikes, um, like the Granite Ridge Tail trail is uh, only two kilometers but what a payoff you get There's to the top views. you look one way you're seeing Georgian Bay you look the other way you're seeing the McClosh mountain range mm -hmm. just incredible great payoff on a short hike mm -hmm. the crack too we've never that really challenging yeah we've never really hiked <laughs> on something so rugged like that before no we did the sleeping giant yeah but it wasn't as rugged as, no. as the crack no but I would say sleeping giant is a much 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 harder hike to do yeah it was exhausting yeah because it's 22 kilometers so the crack is seven. Yeah, but the rock climbing for me was kind of challenging. Yeah. Shorter legs, I don't know. I just had, had a little bit harder work to do. Yeah. I was sore for a couple of days. You use every body part. You use hands, feet, butt, you use everything. I, I'm afraid of heights too. Yeah. So just, yeah, the combination didn't <laughs> work out for no. me so well. And I just skip across the top of them. Yeah, and yeah. Jax, I think Jax is part mountain goat. Yes, he did very well. You were more worried about him than anything else. And he I was know. doing perfectly I fine. He did good. He did, did great. Good. So now the sites, we are, I guess, kind of a pull through site, which is very tiny. It's got like, I love that there are two picnic tables. I wish more parks had that. But on this site, it's there's no room for two picnic tables and a trailer. Yeah. So it was a little difficult. Then we opened our door to get out and you're walking into a tree or our signpost. Yeah. Oh, hi, Jax. <laughs> so like I wouldn't recommend uh, bringing a trailer and truck combination this size to this park because there's very few sites that can handle it. Well, the back end sites, there's more room. Yeah. Yeah. But still, I probably wouldn't recommend it. Our trailer is considered 25 feet. Mm -hmm. It's actually about 30 feet. Um, when you combine it with the truck, it's 51 feet in total length. Good thing we didn't have to put the tip out out because it'd be on the road. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. The tip out would be on the road. So I'd say our site is probably 52 feet. There's only a foot spare yeah so we can separate the truck from the trailer yeah this is more for <coughs> small travel trailers pop-ups and tents yeah and looking around there's a ton of little like tabs oh, and yeah. trilliums and yep. and our pods and stuff like that mm -hmm. and it's ideal for that sort of thing and tenting mm -hmm. of course yeah i'm don't get me wrong there are some big trailers here and you can get them in but it's challenging in some of the in some of the sites yeah this is extremely <laughs> challenging getting it in here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i'm not sure uh how we're going to get it out of here because we have to get it out and have to uh, maneuver around some trees it's i don't know if we're going to be able to get it out i hope we don't have to put another bear moose sticker on our trailer yeah. <laughs> so another beautiful <laughs> thing the paddling yes yes that was amazing George Lake is beautiful lake. It's not too big, so you mm -hmm. don't get big white caps or anything. Yeah. And the views, again, the McClosh uh, mountain range, mm -hmm. just beautiful views when you're paddling. Big, steep uh, rock faces, cliffs. That was one of my favorites, I yeah. think, doing the paddling. And if you want to <laughs> do more, like we just, we just toot around in our little 
toy kayaks here, but obviously mm -hmm. there's uh, a ton of uh, backcountry sites and you can make a very long canoe route of this. Mm -hmm. um, or if you just want to go out for the day and you can go through George Lake, go into the next lake, you know, through a portage or whatever yeah. and check everything out. So it's, it's ideal for paddling too. Yeah, that was my favorite. Mm -hmm. And cycling, we just cycled through the park. Can't take your bikes on any trails. Yeah, there's no, there's no, no. cycling trails. But uh, it's fun still to bike around, check everything out. Mm -hmm. Now this is a wilderness, it's rated a wilderness uh, campground. Yeah, different um, than any of the other ones. Yeah, most done. parks we go to are uh, natural or recreational. Yeah. yeah, so this is wilderness and uh, it, it is a, a very rugged type of camping. Mm -hmm. um, I tell you, before, you know, the type of camping we used to do, um, when we would go tent camping, and we didn't need electricity. And mm -hmm. back then we thought, why would you get an electric site? Yeah. But if we were still in that mode, this would be my number one park to go mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Because the sites are amazing for uh, little like structures like that. Uh, all those little roads like Woodchuck and Yeah, like they had Bear those street names. And, yeah, all, the, all those little ones that kind of end at the water. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. Those are really nice yeah. sites. And a lot of those little roads have a path that takes you down to the water. Now it might be to a cliff face that gives you a beautiful view or it might be right to the water mm -hmm. so it's really nice to uh to have that yeah, and then nice you've got yeah right <laughs> access to uh water from a bunch of sites too yep 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 mm -hmm. <laughs> and they have nice looking yurts too yeah. all those yurts that we saw oh and going back to the wilderness thing yeah that's why there's no playgrounds here yeah there's no visitor center yeah uh, they do have a nature center but the nature center uh it's not a building that you go into uh they just host some programs outside of the nature center and the building itself is mm -hmm. just for storage it looks like mm -hmm. um so oh it is also a dark sky preserve uh, it was a newly designated as a dark sky preserve mm -hmm. and they have an observatory next to the park um we didn't uh partake in that Apparently you can go into the observatory and look through the big telescope to see the stars mm -hmm. and uh, they do loan out <coughs> telescopes. So we didn't do that though, but no. that uh, is an interesting Next thing. Time. Next time. Because the sky here at night is amazing. Yes. It is such a black sky and you see so many stars. It's, it's amazing. Oh, I was just going to mention both quick about the uh, yurts. There's no washrooms real close to the yurts. You have to walk a little ways out to the parking lot to use the washroom facilities or drive to the comfort station. Same thing with the cabins. Yeah, same thing with cabins yep. too. Um, dog beach, it's just the um, on-leash dog beach area. Yep, um, I wish it was off-leash. He yeah. needs to run. Yeah. But at least he's able to get into the water. He doesn't have much room to maneuver on our site, so he's like, tied on his little leash to the picnic table, which isn't much of a run. Yeah, most campsites we go to, we put them, we have like a 50 foot <clears throat> leash. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, he has room to roam, I shorten it to 30 feet or whatever. But uh, at this campsite, it's just his regular six foot leash because it's, it's such a tiny site. Mm -hmm. So in terms of a rating, well, what do you think? That's a decent one. Eight and a half, nine. Okay, we talked about it earlier and you were talking eight. And I'm no, thinking no. nine, nine and a half. Because um, like Being I said, compromise. yeah, for our, our size truck and trailer, um, it's not really, the park isn't really set up for that. But if you have a smaller one, it is ideal. Mm -hmm. Smaller trailer or a tent, it's that's fantastic. Right. And that's why it gets okay. a, a high number. I guess what so nine it is. I guess it's a nine. So here it is. It's a nine. Okay. And the next we trip? We are off to the Rockwood Conservation Area. That is right. We're going to go to Rockwood Conservation yes. Area for Thanksgiving. Yes. Yeah. So we'll see you there. Okay. Happy camping. Bye. Bye. Good. Good. Lots of room. Lots of room? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Breeze. Oh, boy. I was really worried about that. This Keep next going. This next corner is going to be rough up here. Yeah, just Keep wide if you can. Okay, hold on here. Okay, so I'm ready to start turning now. Okay, you're good. You can't do it? Okay. Back up. Okay, you're good. I can't, I can't do it. I gotta back up a bit. Don't be in the way. Okay. 
Still good? Yeah. Really? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Wow. You're doing good. All oh, good. It's a breeze. <laughs> okay. We did it. Okay, All come good. on in. It's a breeze. Yeah, come on in. <laughs>